Hey, how do you doodly do? My name is Roger and for the last few years I've been sailing in the Mediterranean, vlogging about it on YouTube. Then came COVID-19 and I couldn't go. But I had recently bought a camper van and now I want to show you my great country. So come along. This is Norway, and this is my home area, a region called Nordfjord. Today I want to show you some of the coastal areas of Nordfjord, Nordfjordeid, Måle and Stad, which is the most western part of Norway. My father had just bought a new depth sounder and navigation on his boat and asked me if I could help set it up. No problem, whenever I can get out on the water, count me in. Early spring is probably my favorite time of the year. Day by day it gets warmer, brighter, greener and you still have snow in the mountains. And the best of all, you have the entire summer to look forward to. We didn't do any fishing this day, only testing. Just 400 meters away from my father's house they just built a new viking ship museum. So I had to check it out. I must admit that the first time I saw a viking ship in uh, real life, uh, I was kind of disappointed it was so small. This is a replica of the biggest one they ever found. And uh, this is not small. This is quite big. Yes, this is the captain's seat. This is my seat. This is where I should stay. So there's the rudder. Let's see how many oars there is room for. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24 times 2, 48 oars, 48 men to row this boat. I don't know if I can see myself uh, being the captain of a ship like this. Uh, like we have all the uh, modern navigation equipment and they were sailing after the sun. No maps, nothing. It was uh, hazardous to say the least. In the area around Måle there is a lot of beautiful places. Let me show you this rock that has been shaped into a jug over thousands of years. <laughs> beautiful stone in Måle! I do think this is one of my favorite spots on the whole wide world. Yeah, that could possibly be because this was the beach my mother used to take me when I was a kid. And I have so many good memories from this place. And it really is beautiful here on a sunny day.
Hirokina Lighthouse is located at the most western part of the island Vågsøy, where Måle is the main center. The lighthouse was built in 1906 and is well known for its notorious harsh weather climate. People come here to see the roaring waves crash into land when there are big storms coming in. But you should be advised that this is also when it's the most dangerous here. In 1945 the lighthouse burned to the ground after being bombed by the Allied, as the Nazis controlled it. In 1950 it was rebuilt and in 1986 it became fully automated. In 1994 the building was made into a restaurant. At the moment it is possible to rent rooms here and host small events, but there is no longer a public restaurant here. So this is uh, Hoddevik beach on uh, Stadlande. This is the surfer's paradise in Norway. It's still early spring, it's still fairly cold. And I don't think they have the best conditions today. But there's a lot of people coming from far away to surf here. So it's supposed to be very, very good. Hodevik is the Norwegian surfers paradise and I found some surfers that had a little camp set up here and we're gonna talk to them about how it is to be surfing in Hodevik. So who do we have here? Hello my name is Rune and I'm Tina. Oh nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah and you're here often? Yeah quite yeah. often. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, what's what's here? It's uh, surfing actually. Yeah? <laughs> yeah so we come here we came on Friday and we slept there for two days now. Yeah. And I've uh, been surfing both days. I'm gonna surf today as well. And how are the conditions? Now it's pretty small, but it's clean and nice. Yeah. Yeah. So but it's it's hard to find a good wave. Yeah, kinda. But it's a longboard wave. Yeah. Yeah. But th this place is known for good conditions, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a 
pretty nice spot for uh, beginners. Yeah. Yeah. But good conditions when surfing, that is bad conditions for everything else, right? <laughs> Almost, yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. you need as much waves as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So I windy don't. days are good days for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't want too much wind. Not no. too much wind. No. The wind can ruin the waves, yeah. actually. Make them more messy. Ah, yeah. So, I yeah. know that from sailing, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Is this, a, a, is this going on all year around here or is it just now? Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's all year. Yeah? Yeah, it's a little bit smaller from now until August. Yeah. And then it'll get bigger again because of the... But yeah. Norway isn't known for tropic temperatures and no, stuff like this. No, it's not. But you no. just need to put on a wetsuit and uh, it should be fine. So this is a sport for Vikings? Yeah, probably. <laughs> if you could call it that. Is there a lot of foreigners coming here? Uh, yeah, actually. Yeah? Yeah, they are. Oh, cool. A lot of people try to, because this place is, a lot of people known it from pictures and everything. Yeah. Because it's a pretty nice spot. Yeah. So a lot of people just want to check it out when they're first in Norway. Yeah. But you're hardcore surfers, you don't do any other water sports. Um, yeah, we don't do anything else. I don't <laughs> no? do... Well, I'm not a very experienced surfer, but uh, I'm really into kite surfing. Oh. So that's my main water sport. I keep two kites on my sailboat and I, I try them, we, we put them in the air, but I haven't, not with a board yet. Oh yeah? <laughs> uh, yeah. Launching from a boat is uh, maybe a bit more complicated sometimes, yeah. but it's possible. I'm doing baby steps there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you and good luck. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> We are looking at a piece of Viking history here. In the year 997, the Norwegian Vikings in this area was christened here. And that's why we have a big cross standing over there. It's a small Viking town. Hey, tough guy. Yeah, it's old Viking style houses. Look at the roofs. And they say that Vikings were giants. Well, these houses are not. I'm not a tall guy. And, uh, well. Oh. They're padlocked, so we can't go in. That's not authentic to the era. Cool place, very cool place. And the thing is that all these things are in my neighborhood and I never came to visit. There's so many things that I've been missing because I've been working with tourists. I've never been a tourist in my own district. I must say not being a religious person I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> Maybe we should have kept the old uh, Thor and Odin and Frey and all these ancient gods instead of the new almighty one. Yeah, I think I would like that. And Valhalla. Not to speak of Valhalla. It's an endless party. Yes, it was the um, Viking king Olav who christened Norway when he gathered Norway into one country so more than a thousand years ago people embraced Christianity here in Norway not that I wanted to but if they didn't want to lose their head they had to so they didn't have much saying about it <laughs> it feels good now that I'm posing as a Viking on the side of my car <laughs> Yes, I'm now at the most western part of Norway, at West Cup on uh, Stadtland. And uh, this place is known for uh, windy weathers and it's quite high up, so now we're up in the, in the clouds, really. Uh, so you can't really see much. We, uh, we have the ocean down here. I don't know if you can see any of it on the camera, but you have the waves breaking up down there. This is a beautiful place on a sunny day. 
but the number of sunny days are very limited. But when just going a couple of hundred meters back and we come down a bit and we have great visibility. We can see a big ship going southbound now. In bad weather, this is one of the worst areas at sea in Norway. And that's why they're planning to build a tunnel nearby. And that is going to be one of the, I think it's the first ship tunnel ever to be built. Yes, here we can see Westcup from another direction. We have the restaurant right on top of these hills over there. That's it for this episode. Please leave a comment down below and give the video a like. Also make sure you subscribe to follow my upcoming adventures if you are new here. In the next episode I will start my journey heading for Lofoten in northern Norway. I want to give my patrons and supporters a big thank you. Especially my faithful gold supporter Harvey Engbert. I hope to see you all in the next episode. Bye bye.